Hi and welcome to this fifth lesson of the Marmot Investing course. In this lesson, we will look at how to manage your risk. In the last lesson, we looked at risk and how to reduce it. If you haven't seen it already, I would strongly recommend you watch it. Now in this lesson, we will look at how to manage risk in your portfolio. Luckily, there's only one question to ask yourself, and that is, how much risk can you take? There are three key factors for that. There's your age, your future plans, and your capability, capability of handling losses. Your age determines how flexible you are. Now, somebody who's about to retire is much less flexible than a young woman in her 30s thriving in a career and has a stable source of income. For that, there's a general thumb rule, and that is the percentage weighing the stocks in your portfolio should be 100 minus your age. Your plans for the future determine how much safe assets and liquidity you need. So you need liquidity and safe assets. Because imagine your kids are about to go to uni, you're not going to want to invest in some really risky investment. You might want to invest in some high-grade corporate bonds. The third factor is also by far the most important one and that is your ability to cope with losses. Now, I already mentioned this in the first video, when you needed to decide whether you want to be an eagle or a tiger investor. Well, the thing is, if you can't go to sleep at night, knowing your portfolio has sunk by 5% today, then you might not want to consider being a tiger investor, but an eagle. And that is still very important because a lot of people underestimate it. Now, the basic investments are stocks, bonds, real estate, liquid assets, and metals. But to make a basic portfolio plan, all you need to consider is stocks. And that is because stocks are considered to be one of the most risky investments, but also one of the most fruitful investments. The three most popular ways to make up a portfolio are the growth portfolio. That's growth. And that will contain about 65% stocks. Then there's the balance portfolio. That will contain about 45% stocks. And then there's a defensive portfolio, and that will contain about 25% stocks. I said before that there's a thumb rule that is only related to your age, but I also said there's three factors. So I would recommend you start out with a thumb rule, and then you go from there. So imagine you're 20, you would probably go for more of a growth portfolio. But now imagine you want to go to uni, so you'll switch to a balanced portfolio. But now you think you're very smart and your ability to cope with losses is very high. You might want to go for about 50% stocks. And then you need to fill in the four other ones. So if you want a stable stream of revenue, a consistent stream of revenue, bonds, are the ones to go for. If you want another consistent stream of revenue, but that can be slightly more ri risky depending on where you invest, but bonds, don't misunderstand me, there are types of bonds, we'll get into that into the next chapter, there are types of bonds that are very risky, but and that have high rewards, but another stable store, source of income is real estate, then liquidity, that depends. As I mentioned before, your future plans determine very much how much liquidity you're going to need. So imagine, again, you're going to university in one year, but you still want to invest, and university is going to cost 5,000 per year, 
and you want to invest 10,000, then you're going to need at least 40% liquidity. So 4,000, so that would be 40, sorry, right there. 40% liquidity, 4,000, 4,000, let's say, dollars. Because let's say you, you save 1,000 over the year, you have the 4,000, then there's a bit of inflation and you hope your investment's going to catch up with that inflation. And then the last one is metals. And the metals are known to counteract the market. So we've got the market going up. Metals usually, but not always, go down. The market goes down, metals will go up. So the metals are a very good um, investment for diversifying if you want to avoid a market crash. Now in combination with the last video, you know what risk is, how to reduce it, and how to manage it in a portfolio, quite roughly. I will get more into how to make a portfolio a lot more in depth in future chapters. But this chapter is now concluded and I will take a short break, resume after the short break, but I won't take a break from publishing videos for a while. Now as always, thank you for watching this lesson all the way to the end. I would really appreciate it if you shared it with anyone who you think would be interested in it or would benefit from it. And I'll see you soon in the next chapter of the Marmot Investing course.